okay once again good morning all of you so in yesterday's lecture we have discussed about the effectiveness and ntu method so uh, we have derived the derivation for the effectiveness for the parallel fluid exchanger and uh, effectiveness for the counter fluid exchanger okay so before these derivations we have discussed one method that is lmtd method okay so for the designing of heat exchanger there are two method first one is lmtd method and second one NTU method. LMTD is nothing but logarithmic mean temperature difference and NTU is nothing but number of transfer units. Okay. So these are the two methods by using that we have calculated the or we have designing the heat exchanger. Okay. So when we have to use the LMTD method when there is a inlet and outlet conditions are known to us at that time we have to use the LMTD method and if suppose inlet and outlet conditions are unknown to us at that time we have to use the NTU method. So in yesterday's lecture we have derived the derivations for the effectiveness for the parallel fluid exchanger and effectiveness for the counter fluid exchanger. So what is the equation for the effectiveness for the parallel fluid exchanger that is epsilon is equal to 1 minus e raised to 1 minus e raised to minus N2 into bracket 1 plus r divided by 1 plus r and effectiveness for the counter fluid exchanger that is nothing but epsilon is equal to 1 minus e raised to minus NTU into bracket 1 minus r divided by 1 minus r into e raised to minus NTU into bracket 1 minus r okay so these are the equations for the effectiveness for the parallel flow and counter flow heat exchanger okay after that we have discussed two cases case one is nothing but for the condenser and evaporator so for condenser and evaporator the maximum heat capacity is infinity so because of that r becomes zero and if you are putting the value of r is equal to zero then we get the effectiveness for par parallel fluid exchanger that is one minus e raised to minus ntu and same effectiveness we get for the counter fluid exchanger that is one minus e raised to minus ntu so this is the case number one after that we have discussed about the case number two when r is equal to one this is for the typical regenerator and for that if we are putting the r is equal to one then we get the effectiveness for the parallel fluid exchanger as a one minus e raised to minus two ntu divided by two and for the counter fluid exchanger what is the equation one minus e raised to minus ntu into bracket one minus r divided by 1 minus r e raised to minus n 2 1 minus r if we have putting the value r is equal to 1 then we get the 0 by 0 form at that time we have to use the l hospital rule and by using the l hospital rule we get the equation as a effectiveness for the counter fluid exchanger as a ntu divided by 1 plus ntu ntu divided by 1 plus ntu okay so this part this part we have covered in the yesterday's lecture after that we have solved two problems which is related to the effectiveness and ntu method so in that problems we have calculated the value of mass product of the uh, cold fluid then what is uh, what is the value of cc what is the value of ch then what is the value of effectiveness then we have calculated the value of r then we have calculated the value of ntu so what is the equation for the ntu ntu is nothing but u into a divided by c minimum then we have from that we have calculated the area means for the designing designing of any heat exchanger we have calculated the area of that particular heat exchanger so that area we have calculated okay this is related to first problem in the second problem we have calculated the value of r so in the second problem the told that we have to calculate the uh, outlet temperatures that is th2 and TS, tc2 for the counter flow arrangement and parallel flow arrangement so for that first we have calculated the ch and cc then we have calculated the r then we have calculated the the NTU then effectiveness and by using that we have calculated the value of TH2 and TC2 and same calculation we have done for the parallel flow arrangement also okay so this is about the yesterday's lecture this is about the yesterday's lecture now we have to solve the one more problem related to this method yes I present this screen now Okay, now all of you write down the third problem, write down th third problem, write down third problem, a counter flow heat exchanger, a 
a counter flow heat exchanger a counter flow heat exchanger a counter flow heat exchanger is to heat air entering a counter flow heat exchanger a counter flow heat exchanger is to heat is to heat air entering at 400 degree celsius air entering at 400 degree celsius with a flow rate of with a flow rate of with a flow rate of 6 kg per second 6 kg per second by the exhaust gas by the exhaust gas by the exhaust gas entering at 800 degree celsius by the exhaust gas entering at 800 degree celsius once again a counter flow heat exchanger is to heat air entering at 400 degree celsius with a flow rate of 6 kg per second by the exhaust gas entering at 800 degree celsius with a flow rate of entering at 800 degree celsius entering at 800 degree celsius with a flow rate of with a flow rate of 4 kg per second with a flow rate of 4 kg per second with a flow rate of 4 kg per second full stop the overall heat transfer coefficient is the overall heat transfer coefficient is the overall heat transfer coefficient is 100 watt per meter square kelvin the overall heat transfer coefficient is 100 watt per meter square kelvin 100 watt per meter square kelvin and the outlet temperature of the air and the outlet temperature of the air and the outlet temperature of the air is outlet temperature of the air is 551.5 degree celsius 551.5 degree celsius outlet temperature of the air is 551.5 degree celsius full stop specific heat at constant pressure specific heat at constant pressure specific heat at constant pressure for both air and exhaust gas for both air and exhaust gas for both air and exhaust gas can be taken as can be taken as can be taken as 1100 joule per kg kelvin can be taken as 1100 joule per kg kelvin joule per kg kelvin full stop calculate 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 first calculate first the heat transfer area is needed 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 second the number of transfer units the heat transfer area is needed second the number of transfer units the number of transfer units okay once again you have to check the problem a counter flow heat exchanger is to heat air entering at 400 degree celsius with a flow rate of with a flow rate of 6 kg per second 
by the exhaust gas entering at 800 degrees celsius with a flow rate of with a flow rate of 4 kg per second full stop the overall heat transfer coefficient is 100 watt per meter square kelvin and the outlet temperature of the air is 551.5 degree celsius specific heat at constant pressure for both air and exhaust gas can be taken as 1100 joule per kg kelvin calculate first the heat transfer area is needed second the number of transfer units the number of transfer units okay so this is the problem so all of you write down the given things okay so this is the problem which is related to the counter flow heat exchanger this is the problem which is related to the counter flow heat exchanger is to heat air entering at 400 degree celsius means there is a air is there and exhaust gas is there so air is a cold fluid and exhaust gas is a hot fluid okay so air entering at 400 degree celsius so air is nothing but cold fluid so entering temperature of air is given means tc1 is given temperature of the inlet temperature of the cold fluid is nothing but tc1 okay so tc1 is equal to all of you write down tc1 is equal to 400 degree celsius tc1 is nothing but 400 degree celsius with a flow rate of 6 kg per second that is a flow rate dilela hai air sa flow rate dilela hai manje kay asnar hai m dot c is equal to 6 kg per second m dot c is equal to 6 kg per second by the exhaust gas entering at 800 degree celsius exhaust gas jo asnar hai to enter hona hai at 800 degree celsius okay so exhaust gas is nothing but hot fluid so what is the inlet temperature of the hot fluid that is 800 degree celsius so th1 is equal to 800 degree celsius th1 is equal to 800 degree celsius with a flow rate of 4 kg per second tar tya exhaust gas cha flow rate pan dilela so m dot h is equal to 4 kg per second m dot h is equal to 4 kg per second okay m dot h is equal to 4 kg per second then the overall heat transfer coefficient is 100 watt per meter meter square kelvin the overall heat transfer coefficient is 100 watt per meter square kelvin means capital u is equal to 100 watt per meter square kelvin okay and the outlet temperature of the air is and the outlet temperature of the air is 551.5 degree celsius means tc2 is given tc2 is equal to 551.5 degree celsius okay and specific heat at constant pressure for both air and exhaust gas can be taken as a 1100 joule per kg kelvin means cp of hot fluid and cp of cold fluid is given so cph is equal to cpc and that value is nothing but 1100 joule per kg kelvin 1100 joule per kg kelvin and what is to be calculate calculate the first the heat transfer area means a is equal to question mark a is equal to question mark and second the number of transfer units means ntu is equal to question mark okay so how to calculate the q can anyone tell me because we can use any fluid hot fluid is there cold fluid is there so whatever the information related to hot fluid and cold fluid that will be given in the problem itself okay so mass flow rate of the cold fluid is given cp of the cold fluid is given tc2 is given tc1 is given okay but related to the hot fluid they have not given the value of th2 okay so we have to use the formula q is equal to m dot c into cpc into bracket tc2 minus tc1 and by using that we have to calculate the value of q and equate that q value with respect to m dot h into cph into th1 minus th2 so by putting the value of q into that equation we get the value of th2 okay so from these two equations we get the value of q and th2 q is nothing but heat transfer okay and th2 is nothing but 
टेम्परेचर ऑफ हॉट फ्लूड एट आउटलेट टेम्परेचर ऑफ हॉट फ्लूड एट आउटलेट ओके टी एस टू इज नथिंग बट टेम्परेचर ऑफ हॉट फ्लूड एट आउटलेट So all of you write down. Heat transferred to cold air is equal to heat transferred from hot gases. Heat transferred to cold air is equal to heat transferred from hot gases. Heat transferred from hot gases. Okay. So that is nothing but Q. So related to the cold air, what is the equation? Q is equal to m dot C into C P C. Into bracket T C two minus T C one. So by putting the values into this equation, we get the value of Q. Okay. Or we have to equate this that equation with respect to M dot T H into C P H into bracket T H one minus T H two. Okay. So first of all, we get the value of Q. And what is the value of Q? That is four times nine zero zero joule. Okay. This is the heat transferred by That particular hot fluid to the cold fluid. Okay, and now we have to Q is equal to use that equation. Q is equal to M dot H into C P H into bracket T H one minus T H two. So in that equation, only unknown quantity is T H two. Okay, so by putting that value, we get the value for the T H two. Okay, so all of you do the calculation by yourself and find out the value of Q and T H two. Okay, all of you do the calculation by yourself. And find out the value of Q and TH two. Okay, all of you do the calculation by yourself. Okay, so all of you get the answer for Q and T H two. So what is the value of Q? Q is equal to four times nine zero zero joule. Okay, so this much amount of heat is transferred from the hot fluid to the cold fluid. Okay, and T H two is nothing but which is the temperature of the exhaust gas at outlet, and we get that answer as a four seven five seventy two point seventy five degree Celsius. okay so our aim is to calculate the heat transfer area is needed means we have to calculate the value of a and then we have to calculate the number of transfer units 
okay so for the calculation of antu there is a need to be calculate the area so first of all we have to calculate the value of area so if ntu and a both are unknown at that time we have to use the lmtd equation that is q is equal to u into a into theta m so for the theta m is nothing but lmtd so first of all we have to calculate the value of theta m that is lmtd for the counter flow heat exchanger so as we know that what is the equation for the lmtd for the counter flow heat exchanger that is theta 1 minus theta 2 divided by ln of theta 1 upon theta 2 okay and theta 1 is nothing but for the counter fluid exchanger what is the value of theta 1 that is th1 minus tc2 and what is the value of theta 2 that is th2 minus tc1 so by putting the values into this equation we get the value of theta m and we have to put that value of theta m into the equation q is equal to u into a into theta m u is given to us that is 100 area that is we have to calculate that area theta m we have calculated q we have calculated so only unknown quantity is a so we have to calculate that value of a and after that we have to use the ntu equation and ntu is equal to u into a divided by c minimum and by using that equation we have to calculate the value of ntu okay so all of you write down Q is equal to U into A into theta M. Q is equal to Q is equal to U into A into theta M. Q is equal to U into A into theta M. So theta M is nothing but LMTD. And they have given this heat exchanger as a counter flow heat exchanger. So we have to use that equation theta m is equal to theta 1 minus theta 2 divided by ln of theta upon th theta 1 upon theta 2. So for the counter flow heat exchanger, we know that what is meant by theta 1. Theta 1 is nothing but th1 minus tc2, and theta 2 is nothing but th2 minus tc1. Okay. So we have to put that values into the equation and we get the value of theta m. So do the calculation by yourself and put that answer of theta m into the chat box. All of you do the calculation for the uh, LMTD that is theta m and put that answer of theta m into the chat box. Do the calculation by yourself. Okay, so what is the answer of theta m? Anyone put that message in the chat box? So Dhanesh Rao put it their answer 208.39. Okay, so the correct answer is 208.3. Okay, so this is the answer for the LMTD that is theta m. Now we have to put the values into this equation and find out the value of area. Okay, so q is equal to u into a into theta m. What is the value of q? That is 4 times 9, 0, 0, 
then what is the value of u u is nothing but 100 then what is the value of area area we have to calculate theta m we have calculated that is 208.3 okay so by putting this value we have to calculate the value of area that is a is equal to what okay all of you do the calculation for the area and put that answer in the chat box Okay, so we get the value of area as a 48 meter square. We get the value of area as a 48 meter square. Okay, so as we know that what is meant by NTU, NTU is nothing but U into A divided by C minimum. okay so first of all all of you calculate the value of c minimum so first of all we have to calculate the ch and cc capital ch and capital cc capital ch is nothing but m dot h into cph and capital cc is nothing but m dot c into cpc so m dot c into cpc 6 into 1100 that is six six double zero okay 6600 this is the value of cc and what is the value of ch that is 4400 by the multiplication of 4 into 1100 we get the answer for the ch and that is nothing but 4400 so by comparing these two cc and ch we get the which value is minimum that is ch value is minimum so we have to take the minimum value of the heat capacity that is ch so therefore ch is nothing but 4400 so we have to put that value is into this equation that's that is nt is equal to u into a into c minimum so c minimum find out ch and cc find out and from that ch and cc value which value is less that value is nothing but c minimum okay the ch value so which i see then what is the value of cc Sahazar Sashi, the Majukutli value come at the CH value come at the commercial value Majikasna, C minimum as Nare. So therefore, NT is equal to U into A divided by C minimum. So U is equal to 100, A is equal to 48, and C minimum is equal to 4400. So from this calculation, we get the answer for the NTU, and that is 1.09. Okay, what is the answer for the NTU? That is 1.09. Okay, all of you completed this problem. Okay, so these are the problems which is related to the effectiveness and NTU method. By using this method, we have to designing the heat exchanger. We have designing the heat exchanger. Okay, so. We have completed the effectiveness and NTU method. In that, we have completed the two derivations that is, effectiveness for the parallel flow, effectiveness for the counter flow. And after that, we have solved the, some problems which is related to the this effectiveness and NTU method. Okay. The next point, all of you write down the heading as a heat pipe. 
okay actually this point is in the unit number 5 okay so heat pipe is nothing but it is a heat exchanger so actually in the older syllabus this point is in the this topic only manje agodar ta jo syllabus hota tyamadhe ha topic hyaas ha jo point hai to hyaas topic madhe hota pan atta jo navin syllabus hai tyachyamadhe ha jo point asnar hai to unit number 5 madhe asnar hai unit number 5 is condensation and boiling in that condensation and boiling there is a one point that is heat pipe so now how understood the what is meant by heat exchanger so it is very easy to understand the concept of the heat pipe so we have to cover this heat point heat pipe point as a heat exchanger to in this unit okay samajhe ka baka tar ha heat pipe jo point hai to actually panchva unit madhe hai pan ha related to the heat exchanger hai mhanun apan kay karto hai हिट एक्सचेंजर सोबत घेणार आहे लक्षात ठेवा इथं लिहिताना स्टार मार्क करून लिहा युनिट फायव्ह अँड देन वॅव टू राईट डाऊन दी हिट पाईप म्हणजे तुमच्या लक्षात येईल की हा पॉइंट जो आहे तो युनिट नंबर फायव्ह मधला आहे ओके इथं आपला युनिट नंबर सिक्स कम्प्लीट झालेला हिट एक्सचेंजर युनिट नंबर सिक्स इज कम्प्लिटेड अँड दिस हिट पाईप विच इज रिलेटेड टू दी हिट एक्सचेंजर सो दिस इज दी युनिट नंबर फायव्ह सो वॅव टू टेक दी पॉइंट वॅव टू कम्प्लीट दिस पॉइंट ऍज ए युनिट नंबर फायव्ह ओके so all of you write down the in this small we have to write down unit number 5 and we have to complete this point heat 5 and after that we have to start the unit number 5 okay so before going to unit number 5 we have to complete this point as a heat pipe okay so what is mean by heat pipe all of you draw this diagram first all of you complete this diagram heat pipe तर काय आहे हिट पाईप म्हणजे काय असते तर हिट पाईप इज नथिंग बट इट इज अ डिव्हाइस अँड बाय युझिंग दॅट वी हॅव टू ट्रान्सफर दी हिट फ्रॉम वन लोकेशन टू दी अनादर लोकेशन एका लोकेशन कडून हिट आपल्याला जर दुसऱ्या लोकेशन कडे ट्रान्सफर करायचे असेल तर त्यासाठी आपण एक डिव्हाइस युज करणार आहे आणि त्या डिव्हाइस म्हणजे काय असणार आहे तर हिट पाईप असणार आहे तर हिट पाईप म्हणजे काय असणार आहे तर त्या हिट पाईपच्या आतमध्ये काय असणार आहे थोडं लिक्विड असणार आहे ओके अँड इन दॅट हिट पाईप देअर आर थ्री सेक्शन आर देअर ओके फर्स्ट सेक्शन इज इवॅपरेटर सेक्शन देन सेकंड सेक्शन इज एडेबॅटिक सेक्शन अँड थर्ड सेक्शन इज ए कंडेन्सर सेक्शन ओके सो इन दी इवॅपरेटर सेक्शन दॅट पर्टिक्युलर हिट पाईप ऍबसॉर्ब दी हिट फ्रॉम दी सराउंडिंग ओके तर त्या हिट पाईपच्या सराउंडिंगला जी काही हिट असणार आहे इवॅपरेटर सेक्शनला तर तिथं ती हिट काय होणार आहे ऍबसॉर्ब होणार आहे अँड बिकॉज ऑफ दी हिट ऍबसॉर्बिंग व्हॉट एव्हर दी फ्लूड विच इज प्रेझेंट इन साईड दी पाईप दॅट वॉटर इज इवॅपरेटेड किंवा त्याचं कन्व्हर्जन कशामध्ये होणार आहे त्या लिक्विडचं कन्व्हर्जन वेपर्स मध्ये होणार आहे आणि ते वेपर्स काय होणार आहेत मुव्हिंग टुवर्स इन दी अपवर डायरेक्शन किंवा डायग्राम मध्ये जर म्हटला ऍक्च्युली हिट पाईप जी असते ती व्हर्टिकल असते इथं आपण डायग्राम मध्ये ती हॉरिझॉन्टल ड्रॉ केलेली आहे ओके सो व्हॉट एव्हर दी हिट ऍबसॉर्ब बाय दी पर्टिक्युलर दॅट लिक्विड बिकॉज ऑफ दॅट लिक्विड इज कन्व्हर्टेड इन टू दी वेपर्स अँड दॅट वेपर्स इज कमिंग ऍट दी अपर साईड ओके अँड दिस वेपर्स will converted and at the end there is a condensing section so th there where the heat is transferred from that vapors to the heat sink mhanje tithe kay asnar hai tar tya pipe cha surrounding like liquid asnar hai ani tya liquid madhe kay honar liquid mul kay honar tya vapors cha condensation honar hai and because of that that vapors transfer their energy to the surrounding liquid samajhe ka baka म्हणजे समजा तुमचा इव्हॅपरेटर सेक्शन आहे कंडेन्सर सेक्शन आहे तर इव्हॅपरेटर सेक्शनच्या सराउंडिंगला समजा हॉट फ्लूड आहे आणि कंडेन्सर सेक्शनच्या जर सराउंडिंगला कोल्ड फ्लूड आहे तर त्या हॉट फ्लूड पासून आपल्याला जर कोल्ड फ्लूड पर्यंत जर हिट ट्रान्सफर करायचे असेल तर आपण काय युज करणार आहे वी हॅव टू युज दिस हिट पाईप डिव्हाइस ओके समजते का बघा इव्हॅपरेटर सेक्शन मध्ये काय होणार आहे तो हिट ऍबसॉर्ब करणार आहे ते लिक्विड त्याचं कन्व्हर्जन वेपर मध्ये होणार आहे ते वेपर वरती येणार आहेत कंडेन्सर सेक्शन मध्ये त्याचं कंडेन्सेशन होणार आहे आणि तिथून ती हिट सराउंडिंग मध्ये जाणार आहे सो इन दॅट वे हिट ट्रान्सफर इज टेक्स प्लेस फ्रॉम वन लोकेशन टू दी अनादर लोकेशन ओके अँड इन बिटवीन दिस इव्हॅपरेटर सेक्शन अँड कंडेन्सर सेक्शन देअर इज अडॅबॅटिक सेक्शन सो व्हॉट इज दी यूज ऑफ दिस अडॅबॅटिक सेक्शन सो इन दॅट अडॅबॅटिक सेक्शन देअर इज अ नो लॉस ऑफ हिट टेक्स प्लेस व्हॉट एव्हर दी वेपर लिक्विड इज कन्व्हर्टेड इन टू दी वेपर्स इफ देअर इज अ no adiabatic section is there then heat transfer is takes place in between these two sections okay so our aim is to transfer the heat from one location to another location so therefore we have to considering the adiabatic section in between the evaporator and condenser okay 
म्हणून तिथे काय केलेलं आपण तर त्या ऍडॅबॅटिक सेक्शन मध्ये आपण काय केलेलं असतं तर सराउंडिंगला इन्सुलेशन लावलेलं असतं जेणेकरून ती जी काही हीट असणार आहे आतमधली हीट ती सराउंडिंग मध्ये जाणार नाही ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट दीट पाईप सो ऑल ऑफ यू ड्रॉ दी फर्स्ट हीट पाईप डायग्राम ओके थ्री सेक्शन एव्हापरेटर सेक्शन इज देअर देन ऍट दी सेंटर देअर इज ऍडॅबॅटिक सेक्शन देन कंडेन्सर सेक्शन इज देअर ओके हीट सोर्स हीट सिंक हीट सोर्स मध्ये हीट आतमध्ये जाणार आहे हीट सिंक मध्ये हीट बाहेर येणार आहे ओके त्याच्यामध्ये लिक्विडचं कन्व्हर्जन व्हेपर मध्ये होणार आहे लिक्विड लेफ्ट साइड करून राईट साइड करून व्हेपर मध्ये कन्व्हर्ट होऊन ते कुठे जाणार आहेत राईट हँड साइडला येणार आहेत आणि नंतर त्या व्हेपरचं कन्व्हर्जन लिक्विड मध्ये होणार आहे आणि ते सर्फेस वरून परत लिक्विड कुठे येणार आहे परत व्हेपरेटर सेक्शन मध्ये येणार आहे सो इन दिस वे द हीट ट्रान्सफर इज टेक्स प्लस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सायकल लिक्विडचं कन्व्हर्जन व्हेपर मध्ये होणार व्हेपरचं कन्व्हर्जन परत लिक्विड मध्ये होणार परत ते लिक्विड व्हेपरेटर सेक्शन मध्ये येणार परत त्याचं व्हेपरायझेशन होणार सो इन दिस वे द हीट ट्रान्सफर इज टेक्स प्लेस ओके सो ऑल ऑफ यू कम्प्लीट दिस डायग्राम फर्स्ट आफ्टर कम्प्लिशन ऑफ द डायग्राम पुट दॅट मेसेज इन द चॅट बॉक्स ओके डायग्राम इज ओवर दिस इज डायग्राम फॉर दी हीट पाइप ओके सो ऑल ऑफ यू कन्सिडर दी थ्री सेक्शन आर देअर इपरेटर सेक्शन देन एडियाबेटिक सेक्शन देन कंडेन्सर सेक्शन हीट सोर्स इज देअर हीट सिंक इज देअर ओके हीट सोर्स म्हणजे तिथून हीट आतमध्ये एंटर होणार आहे आणि हीट सिंक म्हणजे तिथून हीट सराउंडिंग मध्ये जाणार आहे म्हणजे एका लोकेशन करून हीट हीट सोर्स पण समजा हीट आहे तर ते आपल्याला हीट सिंक पर्यंत हीट न्यायचे आहे तर ते आपण काय करणार आहे बाय युझिंग दिस हीट पाईप टू ट्रान्सफर दी हीट फ्रॉम वन लोकेशन टू दी अनादर लोकेशन ओके तर जे हीट सोर्स मधून हीट आतमध्ये येणार आहे आतमध्ये लिक्विड असणार आहे आणि त्या लिक्विडचं कन्व्हर्जन व्हेपर मध्ये होणार आहेत आणि ते वेपर्स थोडेसे हलके झाल्यामुळे ते वरच्या साईडला मूव्ह होणार आहेत आणि ते कंडेन्सर सेक्शन मध्ये त्याचं परत थंड हवा लागल्यामुळे कंडेन्सेशन होणार आणि ते कंडेन्सेशन होऊन झाल्यामुळे व्हेपरचं कन्व्हर्जन परत लिक्विड मध्ये होणार आहे आणि परत ते लिक्विड कुठे येणार आहे परत ते इव्हापरेटर सेक्शन मध्ये होणार आहे सो इन दॅट वे ही ट्रान्सफर इज टेक्स प्लेस फ्रॉम दी वन लोकेशन टू दी अनादर लोकेशन दॅट इज नथिंग बट हीट पाईप ओके सो ऑल ऑफ यू राईट ऑन दी डेफिनेशन फॉर दी हीट पाईप राईट ऑन हीट पाईप हीट पाईप हीट पाईप आर हीट ट्रान्सफर डिवायसेस हीट पाईप आर हीट ट्रान्सफर डिवायसेस हीट पाईप आर हीट ट्रान्सफर डिवायसेस दे आर हॅलो सिलेंड्रिकल पाईप्स दे आर हॅलो सिलेंड्रिकल पाईप्स दे आर हॅलो सिलेंड्रिकल पाईप्स हॅलो सिलेंड्रिकल पाईप्स फिल्ड विथ ए हॅलो सिलेंड्रिकल पाईप्स फिल्ड विथ ए फिल्ड विथ ए 
small amount of fluid filled up with a small amount of fluid small amount of fluid that evaporates to small amount of fluid that evaporates to that evaporates to produce heat that evaporates to produce heat that evaporates to produce heat produce heat produce heat full stop this heat is then this heat is then this heat is then rejected from another end this heat is then rejected from another end rejected from another end another end okay so what is the prin principle of this so write down next line principle principle of the heat pipe principle okay so all of you understood what is meant by heat pipe heat pipes are heat transfer devices they are hollow cylindrical pipe mujhe ek hollow cylindrical pipe hai tyachyamadhe small amount of fluid asnar hai tyachyamadhe evaporator ani condenser section asnar hai evaporator section heat absorb karnar hai condenser section madhe heat transfer kele janar hai so in this way the heat transfer takes place from one location to the another location that is nothing but that device is nothing but heat pipe हिट पाइप मे लक्षा ठेवा एक सिलिंड्रिकल पाइप है हलो है आत मे का लिक्विड है ओके दैट इज नथिंग बट हिट पाइप ओके देन वी हैव टू राइट ऑन द प्रिंसिपल राइट ऑन प्रिंसिपल प्रिंसिपल हिट पाइप इज जनरली हिट पाइप इज जनरली सेल्फ हिट रिकवरी डिवाइसेस हिट पाइप इज जनरली heat pipe is generally self heat recovery devices self heat recovery devices self heat recovery devices that is that is used to transfer heat that is used to transfer heat that is is that is used to transfer heat from one end to another end from one end to the another end okay so this is the principle heat pipe is a generally self heat recovery device that is used to transfer heat from one end to the another end okay tar working samajle ka baka sagalyana heat pipe cha yes sir take at the diagram diagram okay सो दिस इज दी हिट पाइप तो समझ लगे बेफ्ट हाइंड साइड लवापरेटर सेक्शन है मिडल लट मिडल देर इज एडबेटिक सेक्शन एंड एट द राइट हाइंड साइड देर इज ए कंडेन्सर सेक्शन नाउ वी हेव टू इमेजिन दिस इज ए वर्टिकल पाइप जर हि पाइप जर वर्टिकल के लिए आता मैं का आड़ी का डायग्राम पुअली हिट पाइप ही वर्टिकल आते एट दैट टाइम वी गेट दी मैक्म इफिशियंस ओके तर सगळ्यात खालचा सेक्शन जो झाला तो कुठला असणार आहे इव्हापरेटर सेक्शन आहे ओके समजा हा जो इव्हापरेटर सेक्शन आहे म्हणजे इथं काय होणार आहे त्या पाईपच्या सराउंडिंगला काय असणार आहे हॉट फ्लूड असणार आहे किंवा हॉट सेक्शन असणार आहे म्हणजे तिथं काय होणार आहे त्या पाईपच्या आतमध्ये लिक्विड आहे आणि सराउंडिंगला काय असणार आहे हिट जास्त आहे म्हणजे ती हिट कुठे येणार आहे आतलं लिक्विड ते हिट ऍबसॉर्ब करून घेणार आहे ओके सो that heat is absorbed by that particular liquid and because of that heat absorption what will happen that liquid is converted into the vapor okay the liquid is conversion kasha madhe honar hai vapor madhe honar ani te vapors kay honar hai varcha direction la move honar hai tyacha weight kami honar as compared to the liquid vapors having less weight so vapors are moving in the upward direction okay so in between this evaporator and condenser section that there is a adiabatic section tar adiabatic section manje kay kelele asnar hai tithe insulation लावलेला असणार आहे पाईपच्या वरती म्हणजे जे काही वेपर्स आहेत त्याची हिट सराउंडिंग मध्ये जाऊ नये हा त्याचा पर्पज असणार आहे सो दॅट एडॅबेटिक सेक्शन इज नथिंग बट ऑन दी पाईप देर इज ए इन्सुलेशन ओके सो दिस वेपर्स मुईंग टुवर्ड्स दी अप अप डायरेक्शन अपवर डायरेक्शन अँड दॅट वेपर्स रिच टू दी 
कंडेन्सर सेक्शन कंडेन्सर सेक्शन का सराउंडिंग टेम्परेचर कमी समझा कोल्ड फ्लूड है ओके सो आत मध्य वेपर्स सराउंडिंग जर कोल्ड फ्लूड तो तिथे का वेपर च कंडेन्सेशन हो रहा है And because of that condensation, what will happen? That vapors releases their energy to that cold fluid. Okay, vapor क्या करना रहे? अपनी energy surrounding ला देना रहे. अनि तेचा मोड़ त्या vapors का conversion liquid में दे होना रहे. अनि ते liquid परत त्या pipe चा wall वरुण परत evaporator section में देना रहे. तो तुम्हारे इधर diagram में दे दिस तया. Wall वरुण में direction left hand direction दाख को ले लेता. त्या left hand direction ला liquid क्या होना रहे? परत evaporator section में देना रहे. ओके म्हणजे मिडल सेक्शन मधून वेपर्स वरती जाणार आहेत आणि त्या पाईपच्या सरफेस वरून परत ते लिक्विड इव्हॅपरेटर सेक्शन मध्ये येणार आहे परत त्याचं काय होणार परत त्याचं वेपर्स मध्ये कन्वर्ट होणार ते परत वेपर्स कंडेन्सर सेक्शन मध्ये येणार ते परत हीट ट्रान्सफर करणार परत त्याचं लिक्विड मध्ये कन्वर्जन होणार आणि परत ते सरफेस वरून परत ते कुठे येणार आहेत इव्हॅपरेटर सेक्शन मध्ये येणार आहेत ओके सो दिस इज दी वर्किंग ऑफ दी हीट पाईप ओके सो व्हॉट एव्हर दी हीट विच इज प्रेझेंट ऍट दी आउट साइड ऑफ दी इव्हॅपरेटर सेक्शन दॅट हीट विल बी ऍब्सॉर्ब बाय दी वॉटर and that water is converted into the vapors that vapors gaining the energy and transferring their energy to the condenser section manje ya evaporator section pasun condenser section paryant heat transfer karaycha kaam kuni kelela hai tar ya heat pipe ne kelela hai okay so this is the working of the heat pipe this is the working of the heat pipe okay so all of you write down write down working working take at the bottom side yes sir working so write down working At the hot interface of a heat pipe, hot interface means evaporator section. So write down at the at the hot interface of a heat pipe. At the hot interface of a heat pipe of a heat pipe, a liquid in contact with at the hot interface of a heat pipe, a liquid in contact with a thermally conductive solid surface. contact with a thermally conductive solid surface contact with a thermally conductive solid surface turns into a vapor turns into a vapor turns into a vapor by absorbing heat from the surface turns into a vapor means the liquid is conversion <laughs> ओके टर्न्स इनटू ए वेपर बाय एब्सॉर्बिंग हीट फ्रॉम दी एब्सॉर्बिंग हीट फ्रॉम दी सरफेस एब्सॉर्बिंग दी हीट फ्रॉम दी सरफेस हीट फ्रॉम दी सरफेस फुल स्टॉप द वेपर देन ट्रॅव्हल्स अलोंग दी हीट पाइप द वेपर्स द वेपर देन ट्रॅव्हल्स द वेपर देन ट्रॅव्हल्स along the heat pipe along the heat pipe to the cold interface along the heat pipe to the cold interface cold interface and condenses back into a liquid and condenses back into a liquid and condenses back into a liquid रिलीजिंग द लॅटेंट हीट म्हणजे त्या वेपरच कन्व्हर्जन कशामध्ये होणार आहे लिक्विड मध्ये होणार आहे कशामुळे होणार आहे तर ते लॅटेंट हीट सराउंडिंग ला सप्लाय करणार आहे ओके कंडेन्सेस बॅक इन टू ए लिक्विड अँड रिलीजिंग द लॅटेंट हीट रिलीजिंग द लॅटेंट हीट रिलीजिंग द लॅटेंट हीट रिलीजिंग द लॅटेंट हीट नेक्स्ट या सर then the liquid the liquid the liquid then returns to the hot interface the liquid then returns to the hot interface hot interface through either capillary action through either through either capillary action through either capillary action comma centrifugal force capillary action comma centrifugal force or gravity centrifugal force or gravity 
or gravity and the cycle repeats centrifugal force or gravity and the cycle repeats and the cycle repeats and the cycle repeats ashi cycle ka asnar hai parat parat repeat honar hai so in this way heat transfer is takes place okay full stop next para due to the very high heat transfer coefficient due to the due to the very high heat transfer coefficient very high heat transfer coefficient for boiling and condensation for boiling and condensation for boiling and condensation heat pipes are heat pipes are highly effective thermal conductors heat pipes are highly effective thermal conductors highly effective thermal conductors okay full stop so this is the working of the heat pipe then we have to write down the applications where we have to use this heat pipe okay so in the compact electronics enclosures in the aerospace in the medical in the hvac we have to use heat pipes okay so these are the applications so write down the applications applications of the heat pipe write down first application compact electronics enclosures what are the applications of the heat pipe first one compact electronics enclosures compact electronics enclosures second aerospace second aerospace aerospace third medical and fourth hvac hvac then we have to write down the advantages of the heat pipe what are the advantages of the heat pipe write down first advantage that is the pipe having long life is there so first one long life then this heat pipe is having minimum maintenance so second advantage is minimum maintenance minimum maintenance size of heat pipe is compact so this is also advantage compact size third advantage is compact size compact size fourth zero contamination zero contamination and fifth one zero back pressure zero back pressure zero back pressure okay so all of you write down the advantages one by one Okay, all of you put your roll numbers in the chat box. Okay, remaining part we will take in the next lecture.
ओके सर स्टॉप द रिकॉर्डिंग एंड लीव द मीटिंग